this video we'll look at doing a goodness of fit test using the graphing calculator. We're looking at example 11.3, we're always going to have a expected distribution that we're comparing with an observed distribution. Now the null hypothesis in this test is that the distributions are equal, they're the same. The alternative is that they're different. We'll calculate a p-value. If p is less than alpha, then we will uh, reject the null and uh, support the claim that they are in fact different. Otherwise, we don't have any evidence to say they're different and they will be assumed to be close enough. Now, you may be given frequencies, which is nice. You may be given percentages, you know, with a raw distribution. So um, this just shows you that beginning step. If you have these uh, percentages, you need to convert them into frequencies. And do that by taking the sample size, say 600, and multiplying it by the decimal form of those percent numbers. The graphing calculator has a built-in test for this, and uh, you need to put the data in the lists here. So let's clear out the data that's there. And in L1, we'll put the observed data, and that's the one that's already in frequencies. Now, for L2, we want to put the expected frequency. So if 10% of the population has no televisions, uh, then out of 600, we would expect 10% of the 600, or 60. And we can easily calculate that mentally, but for the other ones, it might not be as easy, so it's nice to use the formula. Go ahead and take the uh, 600 and multiply it by the decimal form of that number. So there are 10% of 600, 60. Uh, and then uh, let's take 600 and then do uh, 16%, 96. 600, and then we want 55%, 330. And then we have 11%, and then we have 8%. And you can check that those add up to 600, so we did it right. Now once the data is in there, if you have the newer calculator, uh, you can just hit stat, and then tests, and then uh, it's at the bottom, so I'm going to hit up to go down to D, the uh, chi-squared goodness of fit test, GOF. And it's going to want to tell where the data is for observed and expected. Now we put it the observed in L1 and the expected in L2. Your degrees of freedom, or DF, is actually the number of rows in each of these tables uh, minus one. So if we have uh, five categories in this problem, right? We're going to use five minus one, or four, for our degrees of freedom. And you can calculate to get the p-value. You see the p-value is very small, so we would reject the null, and we would uh, uh, support the claim that, in fact, the uh, distribution of televisions here in the far western part of the United States is different from that of the overall United States. Um, and you can also do the drawing that shows that. Let me graph it. So there's the uh, chi-square curve. Remember these are always right-tailed tests. And you can see that uh, P is so small, it doesn't even show up on here. All right, now if you don't have that built-in test, here's what you want to do. You want to go to your list and go to L3, go to the top, hit Enter, and we're going to actually have it calculate the statistic for us. Now we're going to take uh, the observed minus expected, in parentheses, um, square it, and then divide by the expected. Right? And it does that for all those automatically. Then we go outside of this, hit second quit, and then we'll go to the list menu, hit uh, second uh, list, it's a second and the stat button and then go over to the math menu and we'll get the sum 
we want to sum up those numbers that are in that third column. So sum of L3. Right, and that's our sort of our test statistic. And then we'll use the distributions that are built in. Second bars, and we use the chi-square distribution. Remember that it's a right-tailed test. And so we'll go from 29.65, that number we just calculated, all the way to the right. And then degrees of freedom is still 4. And you get the same number. So uh, from there you make your normal decision and then your normal conclusion and uh, you can see that in the book.